welcome to Engage with Ange. I hope you that you are having a great week and things are going well. Uh, I am so excited about today's podcast because I probably have uh, a guest that has traveled further than anyone ever to be on the podcast. So I'm really, really excited to introduce uh, our friend, uh, a pastor from Pakistan, Donish Peter. So say hi to everybody. Hello, I, I'm so thankful that you have me here today, Angela. You are a wonderful woman of God. And I'm so grateful that you gave me the opportunity to be on the podcast today. Thank you. Yes, we're excited you're here. So I don't know how we got him all the way from Pakistan to Pensacola, but we did. And uh, so we're super excited. So it has definitely been a long, long, long way. Uh, when I was flying on, on the plane, it was like I'm traveling from one part of the world to another part of the world. And definitely we have a lot of differences like our culture and language and, you know, just like everything. But I am so grateful for one good thing that anywhere we are going in the world, Jesus is same everywhere. Yes. Yes, he Come is. On. He is. Uh, right before we started, he was even telling us uh, that he's... Uh, we, likes Whataburger. So <laughs> Jesus is there too. Jesus, Jesus is at Whataburger. Come on. You know, here <laughs> I love, I was talking to one of the friends here and he said that in the church, brother, you just have to need, you just need three things. I said, what, what are these? He said, you need Jesus, coffee and donuts. Oh. And I'm like, come on. Yes, I'm in, I'm <laughs> in. Well, tell us, so I know we don't have a long time today. Tell us just a little bit about, um, what you do about your ministry there in Pakistan, who all you minister to, kind of what's happening there? Well, my ministry's name is Grace Network, as you know, and you know, our heartbeat is to communicate the gospel and make God's love visible. And when I said visible, it means that it has to be seen with your physical eyes. Your spirit has to feel it that you're loved by someone. When I see the lives being touched by the love of God, I literally hear it from every single life that what we are seeing it now or what we are experiencing right now with what you have done for us or with us, we have never seen this ever before in our life. Our family is transformed, our community is transformed. Well, basically Grace Network is a network of many different things. So our ministry is about television. It is definitely about this wonderful medium which you also have here to communicate through media, even if it's radio or podcast. And then also we are a ministry uh, who is hosting and conducting crusades, conferences, uh, seminars across the nation of Pakistan. In fact, the, the reach is extending to other Muslim countries. Other Muslim countries mean Saudi Arabia, UAE, uh, Oman and Qatar. And we are believing uh, that as we are extending our boundaries, the Lord's hand and his favor is in it. Otherwise, when I look at our finances or our abilities, uh, I, I really feel sometimes that I am not uh, capable of doing what I'm doing right now. It is his grace, his mercy, and for that good reason, I am always bowed down in His presence. The Lord, it is only you who is able and you have made it possible. And uh, apart from just the crusades and the conferences, Grace Network is also operating as a non-profit organization, uh, especially for the nation of Pakistan, right. where there are so many things happening. Um, you know, one of the things Pakistan is famous for is its greenery and agriculture. At the same time, Pakistan is also famous for the persecution of Christians. And that is not a good thing at all. In fact, it's sad. Right. But I'm so glad that even if there are challenges, there are things happening. In midst of it, God has placed us as the answer to many tears and prayers. And we are reaching out to the unreached people groups, villages and cultures with, with the Grace Network initiatives which are, I mean, I can tell you about a little bit of them. One of them is planting clean water hand pumps in the regions where people uh, have the crisis of water. They have no water supply at yeah. all. Or even if they have, they have it from black muddy streams or possibly gutters. Then we have, especially for the women, 
uh, because you know we live in a culture, we live in in a, in an environment where women are abused, molested, right? Um, and and I do want to mention that one word that they are oppressed, they are pressed down, right? And they do not have that position in the society, in the community even where they can freely breathe, where they can freely exercise their faith, where they can really exercise even their gender. So for those women, we have just initiated, it's been like one and a half year, one very special um, uh, uh, program, which is called microfinance businesses to bring f uh, businesses like sewing machines to the women. And there are other small businesses and other business opportunities which we are bringing to these women to live a life of freedom where they are independent and they have uh, something to feed themselves, their children, right. and even their families. It, 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 it can include their husbands and grandmas and grandpas and na -na -na, everybody. That's amazing. So, so God is literally dealing with Pakistan right now in enormous, strange and powerful ways. We are seeing miracles, healings and all of the supernatural elements of the kingdom and the nature of God. But along with all of those supernatural things, we are literally seeing that the love of God is impacting the lives like never before ever in the history of that part of the world. Yeah. I, I'm I, I so want to go visit so bad. I know I've had the opportunity. Well, you're coming. <laughs> I'm coming. Um, I've had the opportunity, you know, to be on a Facebook live with you yeah. a long time, you yes. know, a couple of years ago, and to share um, what what's going on there. Broadcast that was. It we was sometimes good. still talk about that one. We need to do another one. We should do another one. Well, one thing Donish is not going to tell you is that he is a young young man <laughs> compared to me. Um, he is 29 years old, and he went into full-time ministry in Pakistan, felt that God put all of this on your heart when you were 17 yes, years old. Right. And he has hit the ground running since he was 17. Yeah. So talk a little bit about your heart for Pakistan and, and your vision for Pakistan. Like why, why have you laid down your life for well, this nation? The most important thing is this, that I was eight years old when I began my uh, biblical studies that include some basics and also the deep theological and doctrines and all of that but you know I always learned Bible for one thing and that is to argue and you know I always wanted to win from others that I know something <laughs> right I know something and I can I can put pull you down but when I was 17 in one of the services I encountered the Lord and when I said that I encountered is this that he appeared to me wow. and my eyes saw him I, I did not I didn't see his face but he appeared to me I know that this is the Lord who I worship to and that was the day when for the very first time Holy Spirit touched my life and when he touched it touched my life it was like from the top of my head to the tip of my toe every single cell in my body transformed and I begin to feel something new. I still remember that place that our church service ended and I was right there for the next six hours crying and weeping right on my knees, repenting for the things I did. Everything I read from the age of eight till 17, every single word of Bible, in fact, even a dot in the Bible became a reality for me. I began to wow. live it. And it was not just the touch of the Holy Spirit. There were things which were happening in my life. My grandfather was the bishop of uh, bishop and chairman of all churches council in Pakistan, and he died back in two thousand and seven. And he and I was together in that accident. I survived, and he died. We were on the same motorbike, which which he was wow. riding, and I was sitting behind him. And there were two buses which were uh, racing, and when they were racing. It happened that one of the bus striked us and the other one was on my chest and people pulled me out of that out of the tires of that bus full of passengers and that was a miracle that not wow. even a bone of my body broken the Lord literally from a childhood shown me that he have a greater purpose then incident upon incident I mean if I'm gonna talk about that it's the, the 30 minutes podcast will go too long <laughs> but one thing 
after another the lord was calling me and showing me but after his death it was like a turning point for me the things became more real in 2010 here i am sitting on the couch at my home and uh, i was praying and the lord with my open eyes i'm seeing this vision that the heaven is open it's wide open no sky no, no bird i mean nothing just an open heaven and from that open heaven i am seeing you know just the lights and and thunders and so much of light was there and i saw the rain falling down on earth and the rain which was falling down it was filling the entire entire earth and I, when 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 i'm seeing that rain filling the entire earth i'm i'm asking this question to the lord in that vision i said lord and i still remember that voice i never say that i oh i'm hearing the voice of god i have this i heard the word no this is only two times when i heard the audible voice of god in my life it was that time in 2010 when the lord said that now is the time that you give a formal uh, face to your ministry i heard the voice of god in that vision he said this is the rain of my grace which will fill this entire world that was the day the lord gave me this grace name for for whatever i am going to do on this world for the rest of my life it is only going to be for with and in the grace of god and i believe that if i have done so much in this time there has been no capa- capacity capability ability skill talent anything in my own self it is the lord who is driving me it is the lord who is leading me it is the lord who is guiding me i am just being obedient to what he has called me to do yeah. i'm just being on my knees every day and telling him that i am not enough to do it what you're doing through me so this is uh just a little bit of where i have come from and this is my vision then in 2020 um i am hearing this voice again it was january 2021 i was in one of the tribal village and you know it's just recent we are in 2021 right now and right. i'm talking about um uh, january of 2020 and i heard second time this is the second time i'm hearing the audible voice of god we were planting 10 water hand pumps uh in one of the tribal village and s- suddenly this manifested presence of the holy spirit i mean his presence was wow. thick was strong was it was like i felt it never before and i'm not even in my prayer i'm just standing there watching these uh labor or uh, digging or drilling the water hand pump they are boring it and i'm st- standing there and here is the power and the presence of the holy spirit which came upon me and i begin to see the same vision which i saw in 2010 where i began my full time ministry and the lord spoke to me again he said now is the time i want you to cast your net wide i am about to increase you i never knew that what the lord really meant i thought i mean it could be anything february february came and then march in march we had a lockdown a complete lockdown because of the covid-19 pandemic breakout yeah everything shut down and i am again here in the presence of god and telling him lord you said me that you are about to increase me and we are here that everything is shut down i don't think so that i heard the right voice maybe i made wow. a made a mistake <laughs> are the you lord sure said, lord yeah and he's like wait and see it's just the way the lord was telling moses to say to israelites at that time ask them to be quiet and see my salvation same thing the lord said me wait and see i yeah. never knew that god is about to open right now sister we are planting uh, 30 churches just in 2021 right wow. after i go wow. back from the states uh we are about to plant in one uh, plant a church in one of the most uh dangerous and threatening areas um uh, because of the protocol i cannot disclose everything but we are planting one of the church there and then we are praying we are believing for finances and every other things to line up and this year we will be planting 30 more churches in the tribal 
and remote regions in Jesus' name. Ooh, see, I told y'all he was busy. I'm just telling you. And I look at my life and my schedule. And I think, oh, wait, you're going to go back and plant 30 churches, like at the, you know, in a few months. And um, and look, you know, that is something in Pakistan that is just uh, almost unheard of. Yeah. That these churches that you're building based on relationship, That's right. right? You're building them because you can't just preach openly. And uh, what, what are the stati- statistics, what are some of the, you know, the statistics right now in Pakistan of, of how many Christians there are and how the church is, is impacting that, well, that area? Well, Pakistan is a country of about 250 to 270 million people. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the city where we are based right now, where Grace Network's main offices are, that is Karachi City. It has the population of about 25 to 27 million souls. Ooh. which is a pretty big city. Um, I do want to tell that this is the world's second largest Muslim city after Jakarta, Indonesia, um, with, with, with the size of 25 to 27 million souls. So it's a huge ground right there. The country I'm coming from, we these are the missionary stats I'm giving out to you. Okay. Over 650 tribes are those which are still unreached. And I'm when I said, unreached it means that they are the people over 650 tribes which have not heard the name this name we serve we live for we worship jesus even once in their life i'm going to stop him for just a minute so we have to think about that think about that that there he just said just in his nation alone there are 650 tribes of people that have never not once ever in their life would even know who Jesus was. I've never heard his name. They've never heard the gospel. They've never heard anything. And, and you know, I, I think about that and the reality of that in the U.S. where we sit and can hear Jesus all the time. It, you know, there's 500 churches in Pensacola alone that you can just pick a church, go hear about Jesus anywhere and everywhere. And I, that just blows me away, you know, and, and my brother, you know, who's our pastor, he says all the time, you know, there is there's nobody should hear the gospel twice until everybody's had a chance to hear it once. And and, you know, those 650 tribes of people, God planted you there. There there is these churches that are about to be planted that have been planted are about to impact those tribes. God's going to make a way. It may seem impossible, but God is going to make a way. Amen. So. I, I certainly believe that uh, it is, again, it's not in my capacity, I said. Um, if I look into my pocket, um, I am empty. But if <laughs> I look in my father's pocket, yes. they are overflowing. And I believe it firmly. There has been no day, you know, many times when you're seeing people coming from uh, the countries like where I, ha- I have come from, you might uh, hear some weak words from them that, you know, oh, we don't have this. Surely we don't. But here is the thing. There has been no single day, um, an hour, or a minute in my life where I have felt ashamed that, Lord, I wanted to do, do this, and it never happened. But this is what I have seen, that every single thing I have put my hand in, the Lord has opened his heaven for that. And I am so confident about it. Not just 30, 3,000 churches are going to be planted in my lifetime or even more. Yes. No, they are. And listen, if you're listening right now and you're hearing some of the things that, that uh, Donish is sharing out of his heart and his life right now, this is, I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, uh, put... Uh, the country of Pakistan put uh, Donish and his beautiful wife Anita put them on your prayer list because we've got to be praying over over them because they are on the front lines. They are not just you know out, out building a, a, a fun new church with a coffee shop in the front of it. They are in. They are on the front lines. They are building the church of Jesus Christ in Pakistan that is against all odds there. And so I just, I'm, I'm admonishing you today to pray and cover them. And at the end of the podcast, I'm going to give your, your Facebook and your inter, your website so we can, um, you know, so they can go and they can support and they can pray. Yeah, before we end up, I, I, really, I really want to, um, it's like I want to throw this challenge out there. Yeah. 
Uh, one thing I said that other day in the church as well that I am so thankful. You know, there are all kind of things people talk about America and the Western countries and the Western world itself. But here is the thing. This is the reality. This is a fact nobody in this world can deny, especially the Christian world around this globe cannot deny it. That America in specific and the Western world has been the part of the world from where the gospel has been sent and now spreading across the globe. But here is an important thing which I want to put out as a challenge right now to my brethren, to my brothers and sisters in faith who have the things which many of the people lack today. Um, this is not a challenge from a pastor or an evangelist. I believe that this is the, this is the challenge which the gospel is making to each one of us today. I always say that, that if you are a Christian, that Christian is not the one who is following Jesus Christ. No, he is not the one who is following Jesus Christ. But the Christian and the definition in its nature is the one who follows Jesus and leads other to follow Jesus. Oh, yes. And the truth is that if you are not leading others, then you are still not walking right with the Lord. You've got to be responsible. And this is what we, are, we were off the screen talking about. Uh, we were talking about this off the screen this morning as well. That, you know, sometimes we, we think that, oh, I need to do this. Or I want to do this, I intend to do this, or I'm thinking to do this. The gospel for a Christian is not that I need, I want, I intend, or I should, should not. This is the responsibility. This has to be the responsibility. Yes. More than you feed yourself every day with bread and water and every other thing. This is the responsibility. And, and, and I don't know that how much or when some people will understand this, that this is not what I want to do, intend to do, desire to do, need to do. This is what you have to do because this yes. is your responsibility to follow Christ. And if you think that you are following him correctly, then you should be somebody who is leading others to Christ. And if you're not a pastor or evangelist or apostle, or a prophet or a teacher it does not matter right you could be the financer in the kingdom you could be somebody who is sending out your prayers you could be somebody who's sending out your resources you have to be somebody who is participating in the works of the kingdom on this world and do I mean this is for anybody who is listening to us right now that yes. you you Angela Jadine Danish Pastor Len, everyone, Pastor Tim, or, or or any name. I mean, if you're listening to me, you can put your name right yes. there. This is your responsibility to do. If you are a Christian, you got to do it. And I'm not, I don't want to sound selfish to you. Sow your seed. Go there where the Lord wants you. I mean, there are dreams you must be dreaming. There are visions which you are seeing. There is some burden in your heart you carry. Or there is something in you. You should follow the voice and the guidance of the Lord. But there, there has to be something you are doing about. So this is what I said. That Sister Angela, you are the answer of somebody's prayer today. You are the answer of somebody's prayer today. You are the answer of some helpless screams today. You are the answer of somebody's hunger today. You are the answer of somebody's uh, help today. There are millions and millions and millions of those brethren who are bought with the same blood from which I and you have been bought. Yes. And they are screaming out for that helping hand which can bring them out of that pit of the darkness. How long, how long will we stay away? How long will we say tomorrow maybe will be a good day to do it? How long will somebody say that let me settle in my life first and then I will do it? We don't have time to settle we in our life. We don't have any more time. No, because Jesus is coming back sooner, sooner than we think. Sooner. And, and it's, you know, I, I want you to take that challenge 
that he just said because especially I, I mean I'm a little bit raw but I feel you know in America we are we are a little bit lazy <laughs> um, in our faith and and I think that um, it's it's a season for us to remember that is our responsibility yeah. that is our responsibility and um, and don't take that lightly today so um, you know it's something that we we've got to grab a hold of and go do it don't wait till tomorrow or next week or, or, or next month you know right now there God always has somebody around you for the right now I always. was I was listening to one of the evangelists that day uh, there were some series I think it was uh, I don't remember maybe Daniel Coranda the successor of Renard Bonke Ministries and I was listening to this guy and he said he said there are visions and dreams and this is usually what we say in Pakistan as well that the most expensive land or place in this entire world is the graveyard yeah. where people are buried with a billion dollar vision with a million dollar dream wow they had so much to do the Lord had given them so many talents which they could have utilized for for the kingdom advancement in this world there are dreams they have dreamed there are visions they have seen and with all of that they are now under tons and tons of sand and nothing is left mm -hmm. here is the challenge will I die with nothing in my hand or will I be somebody who will you know sister Angela I do want to close it by saying this I pray this I pray this over and over for my life and this is not what I'm saying because I'm sitting here in, in, in the very heart of the United States of America I'm gonna go back in my country I have prayed that Lord I do not want to die with flu and sneezing <laughs> I don't want to die with uh, any of the disease if yeah. you want to take me take me as a martyr yeah. this is my prayer for my life and this is how I want to live there are the days coming when I will stand just the way we are sitting in front of each other mm -hmm. the same way I can I cannot even imagine that you know God will be like this in front of me imagining this makes me close my eyes and weep and weep that there is a day coming that when I will be standing right in front of the throne of God and there will be people who will be judged for the things they have done mm -hmm. bad or good black or white does not matter I want to be there and I obviously will be there but this is what I Me want too. to hear from God this is what I prayed for my life I said Lord I want to hear this from you I can I can tell you that Angela you can imagine think about that Jesus coming towards you tapping on your shoulder and saying you Angela my faithful servant you did a wonderful job and I'm so happy for you I'm so happy with you come and enter in my eternity come and enter in my kingdom that is what I want to hear and I pray and I believe and I I, I, I really pray about this that this becomes the desire of every single Christian who is breathing on the face of earth here in Pensacola Florida and all over uh, America and this world Amen. hallelujah Woo. yes Come on. When you think about it like that, it becomes so real. It becomes so real. You know, we make it kind of this far off thing like God isn't, we're not going to see him face to face, but we are. We are. We are going to see him face to face. Yeah. And, and you have to know where is your soul? Where is your heart? And the people around your life that you see, you know, where, where are they? And are you going to be the one that didn't walk by them? Or are you going to be the one who told them? That's the right. Truth? That's right. So, um, really quickly, just tell tell us a couple of things, um, just testimonies that have been happening in Pakistan, things that God's been doing. Um, I know that that there's just such a high rate of suicide and and you know killing and oppression and, and lots of things. What is God doing that you've seen that He's breaking through some of that stuff? Now, I want to tell you about uh, this one story because there are so many testimonies, but this is one of the testimony I have for the woman in, uh, in America, especially in the English world, because I believe that this is the time when women can communicate 
the hope when women can communicate uh, the peace and the joy to another woman in a better and a profound way because of their uh, their same gender because a woman it does not matter I usually talk with Pastor Len Belanger and I say this often that a wife is a wife does not matter white or black a wife is a wife does not matter in America or in Pakistan you yes mean, I mean you have to be the <laughs> husband it does not matter where you are so here That's is the right. thing this is an important thing I met this woman in one of the village um, she was a pretty woman uh, but she had been through so much in her life. A young, pretty woman in one of the tribal village. We went to plant four water hand pumps in that village. And, and I got to meet her after planting water hand pumps. She just came and began to kiss my hands. And it is unusual. It never happens. I mean, they are the women who, do, who are not even allowed to show their face to another man. They, they are still living in the days of uh, Papa Adam. They are still <laughs> living in the Stone Age. They are, they are yeah. still, I mean, they don't have electricity. They do not have uh, food to eat. They don't have clothes to wear. But with their culture and rituals and traditions, they are so bounded that they do not let anybody cross that line. This woman from that culture began to kiss my hand and touch my knees with such honor and such respect that I cannot tell you. But here is the thing. She told me her story. She said, brother, I was raped 12 times. Wow. I attempted to commit suicide three times. One time. My husband saved me. Second time, the thought of my children that what they're going to do, how they're going to live, that stopped me. Third time, she literally drank poison. But wow. her husband immediately came and took her to the nearest herbal doctor. And she was saved in any way. But she went through such trauma and abuse and molest. I mean, just thinking about I can't even imagine. You know, I mean, if you're walking on the street and some guy begin to hurt on you, or begin to taunt you, begin to, you know, just whistle uh, after you, you feel bad about it. And being gang raped for 12 times, you become a living dead body. And that's how she was. We had to take care of this woman for a pretty long time and had to get her recovered from this trauma. But here is the thing. That when she experienced the love of God, which not the government, not the authorities, not the non-profits, not any other individual brought to her, but Jesus brought to her yes. in form of the yes. water hand pumps, because of which she was abused and raped and molested. Every day she had to walk 14 miles, 14 to 15 miles, just holding a pot of water on, on her head and walking in the scorching sun and 14, 15 kilometers one, go, one way. And then back and on the way you get raped well, not once not two not three not four not five not six twelve times you become a living dead body then but when you experience the love in that way that will truly transform you now what happened not just she not just her family but this entire village of about wow. 70 80 families gave their life to the Lord just because they come to know that there is somebody in this entire universe when nobody is reaching them to help them to bring them out of this there is a ray of light yeah. his name is Jesus Christ yes. people are receiving hope people are receiving faith the true faith you know I always say this that biblically according to what the word says or in a Christian belief, the opposite of belief is never the unbelief. No, the opposite of faith is not even no faith. You know, sometimes when you ask people that tell me that what's the opposite of faith, they would tell you that uh, no faith or unbelief. No, the opposite of belief is believing on the wrong things. Yeah, that's Everyone have belief. Even 
somebody have believe on rocks somebody have believe on technology somebody believe have uh, have believe on the tombs and the rocks or ev- in fact on animals as well they believe that that any that specific animal can give them something it's god for them but listen they have placed their belief and faith in the wrong thing which is not right and this woman come to know the right person the right personality who is who has reached out to them in the time of the greatest suffering so this is what you know by just saying that story i want to challenge the woman as well you know i'm i'm doing so many of challenges but this <laughs> this will be we need it we i need, need to challenge myself every day i do challenge myself yeah. every day you know pastor len belanger your brother knows me very well i challenge myself every day and when uh, you know he was teaching me that day about the lion you know a lion is a lion if you come uh, in between his target he can even eat you so i am that lion right there i do not stop for any good thing there uh, just the way i said that from the beginning of my ministry there has been no single day where the lord has shamed me it is because that i'm never afraid to go and i'm still when i'm talking to you i'm not afraid to tell that god is the god if you're not following jesus you're going to hell right away there is no other way you're going but here is the challenge for the woman you can communicate the love and gospel and hope the best way to the other woman because you know and you can feel you can sense what that suffering fellow sister in faith is going through in a third world right now you can we we can feel that right here yeah we can know that right now and and i think you know as women a lot of times we we get so caught up in our emotions we don't just speak the truth we won't just we won't just bust through that thing and 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 believe god like that woman that you were just talking about yeah. you know she was she was at a place that she was desperate yeah she was desperate she was crying out for help and and there are women all around us in america in pakistan that they are crying out on the inside of them they are crying out and so angela i when i when i think about the woman i meet every day if you can hardly imagine or visualize this that you are kidnapped you know i just want to give out this situation to you yeah and you must place yourself in that position right now think about that you are kidnapped right now and you are in one of the room your hands and feet are tied on a chair and there is something you know they they have tied your mouth with tightly with a piece of cloth you want to scream loud i mean you want to you want to break that rope with which you are tied and you want to scream and you want to scream hard for help and you are not able to get that help how would that feel like i want to scream right now but i cannot do that i am seeing them every single day that they are going through it yeah. every day yeah they want to scream loud they cannot they want to cry loud they cannot they want to laugh loud they cannot and in that situation these women need the help right now or otherwise i don't know what will happen well jesus is the only thing the love of god and and being exactly what you said earlier we have to be the, those hands and feet and go and 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 hear the voice of god to be in the right place so that we can that's right one life at a time one soul at a time come on because that's all we can do that's it's it. it's you know and it, to save one life is worth it right yeah, jesus right. came if jesus just came for one life it was worth it to him and um so i i, I man i hate that we have to wrap up but i know i know that we do and um Thank you for sharing your heart. Thank you. I feel the presence of God so strong in here. And I just um I'm so grateful to the Lord that he gives us the privilege of knowing people of like faith that want to see the world change, that we want to see the world transform, that we believe 
God is able, that he's great enough, that he's big enough, that he's bigger than any enemy or anything that any fear that we may face. And, um, and I just believe that, that God, you know, God gives divine appointments and, um, and just the, the privilege of, of having this, these last few minutes with you, that that's, that's an honor. And it's just a privilege that God gave the time because these last few minutes, what it does is it builds faith in us. Amen. It builds faith in those of you that are listening right now. It builds our faith to think I can do more. I can do more than I'm doing. I can see miracles. I can see a life transformed. And I just believe, I believe we're going to, we're going to cut the ropes of some of those people who are tied up. Amen. I just believe that. Will you just pray as we, and will you just pray whatever you feel to pray uh, over whatever, whatever. Yes. So anyone Thank who's you, listening, Jesus. I want you to believe on this word. I release this word as sister angela said i feel the holy spirit right Thank now in this place where we are recording this and do know that our god is the god of time space and distance right where you're listening us right now or watching us right now god is touching your life as you are hearing my voice as you are hearing my voice the holy spirit of god yes. is touching your life yes. father i come to you in the precious name of jesus christ in agreement with every single saint who is in with me in this room right now and we pray that lord anyone who's listening to us if they are sick if they are sick in their body if they are going through any 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 mental trauma or they are broken in their emotions or if they are weak in their finances every kind of spirit of trauma and darkness and disease yes. and sickness shall leave yes. their bodies and lives and hearts and in minds right now in the precious name of jesus yes. christ of nazareth and everything which is not aligned in their life shall come in alignment right now in the name of the lord then i pray lord that equip them encourage them every single morning they wake up and Lord, make them feel this responsibility that the time is now and right now and right now. Yes. There is such an urgency and, and, and we need to step forward in faith and believe that you are the one who is going to transform the communi communities and countries for the sake of your kingdom and for the sake of your son who came down for the you, rebellious men who came down for the sinful man, who came down for the man who was trapped in darkness and guilt and shame and every kind of immoral activity. But your yes. son came down for that. And today, that son looks upon us Jesus. and wants us to be his tools, his hands and his feet to go and transform this world. Father, I release this power and this anointing to everyone and anyone who is listening to my voice. And I say that this is not my voice, but the voice of you, O oh Lord. Rise and shine. Yes. Rise and shine. In Jesus' Thank mighty Jesus. name. Amen. 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 I believe it. I believe it. Well, thank you for uh, being a part. I know that if you were listening, this changed your life. There's no way it couldn't have changed your life in some way. And uh, so uh, I hope that, that you just let this encourage you. Be challenged this week. Go do what we just shared. Go do it. And watch what God will do. He will meet you every and time. Every time. Me to pray for Pakistan. You want me to pray for Pakistan? Yeah. Okay. I will pray for Pakistan. Oh, we want them to. Yes. Or you want me to right now? Let's do it. Let's right do now. it right now. Here. God, we just thank you right now. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are moving in the country of Pakistan right now in ways that we don't even realize, in places we don't even know that you are at work, that you are rearranging situations, God, that you are making resources available so that people, every person, every one of the 650 tribes that we just talked about can be reached with your name, Jesus, with your uh, gospel, with what you did. And God, I pray over the people of Pakistan that every one of them 
will be set free. We declare, God, that every soul belongs to you. I call every soul for your kingdom. Every soul in Jesus' name. Every man, every woman, every child, every young person. God, we call them for your kingdom. God, we claim them and we break the hand of the enemy that has been deceptive in so many minds and hearts of the people in Pakistan. And I thank you right now, God, that you are breaking something through. And God, I cover uh, I cover uh, Adonish, his wife, their ministry, the, the people in their ministry, God, I thank you that they are doing something, God, that you are you are surrounding them, that you are going ahead of them as Jehovah Jireh. You are making provision. You are making a way where there is no way. And I thank you, God, that there is so much favor that is coming on that nation. Yes, Lord. There's so much favor, God, yes. that's coming. And you are going to show yourself to be God, Jehovah, over that nation. And so I thank you right now, God. We thank you, God. Do the miraculous in Pakistan in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I um, just take all of this. We're going to let it all just settle in our hearts. And I'm telling you, let a new passion arise in you to reach the lost. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, thanks for listening. Keep your world big. And we will see you next week.